Okay. 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 Naftali, I met your uh, grandson last night. He was in the airport coming back from New York. Dalia's son, I don't remember his first name. It's, uh, he's a shliach in um, Aventura. Strulak. Thank oh, you. What? His name is Strulak. Thank you. Okay. Who opens it up usually? I think Baruch. So, uh, whenever he gets here. <clears throat> okay, we thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. The schus of our learning, we should have the base of Migdash. The learning will learn Nishma, Sava Goldabas Baruch, Binyam, and Nisan al Zabdan Mansian. And the first name of her husband, David Ben Sara, and Gedalia gets a lot of yeser and Pegasus Fira. Okay, so if you look on the Yudgim Alam and Beis towards the bottom, uh, it's about twelve lines up from the bottom. It says Tana Rabbanon. Tana Nebraisa Mad Bekadam Tere Neviim Maksuvim Keacha Dibra Meir. The Meir says that you can make a whole Tanach all together. You can take a Chumash. Taira, the Nevi'im, the prophets, Uksuvim, the writings, and you can put it all together, and that's acceptable. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi says, no, Taira b'fniatsim, Nevi'im b'fniatsim, Uksuvim b'fniatsim. We don't have a Tanakh altogether. We have a, um, a Taira, and we have the Nevi'im, they could be combined, and we have the Uksuvim, they could be combined. Yeah, there was a big deal when, um, when I think Koran made the Tanakh I think all the shuls were excited for the Haftarahs because there says something about using a one Tanakh. Now, this is uh, talking about the, uh, as in a book form, it wasn't in a scroll, but I think for some reason the shuls were excited when that came out. Anyway, over here it's um, according to Rabbi Meir, you put it all together, according to Rabbi it says it should be separate, uh, separate scrolls. The Chum say that each book of the Tanakh is supposed to be a separate scroll. Yeah, in in the Kolo, um down the street, there's the the center Aron Kaidash, is for the Sifrei Torah, and then on the side they have the Sifrei Nevi'im. They have the scrolls for the Nevi'im. Um, Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says this is now. Rav Yehuda is Rav Yehuda by Yecheskel, it's not the the Machlekes. Rav Meir, Rav Yehuda, and the Chachamim. We had just had three opinions. That Rav Yehuda is Rav Yehuda, Rav Eloi. Mayor, uh, the students of Rabbi Akiva. This is Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda is a student of Rav and a student of Shmuel. He comes in and he says, There's a story with Baitis Ben uh, we, We've had him before. The Gemara Psachim says, Baitis Ben um, uh, He made a, um, a, a print, a, 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 like a mold for, uh, for the Matas. They said they didn't want you to make pictures on the matzahs because it could take too long and then it could become chametz. Mm -hmm. They said, let's say we have just one like stamp that it would press into it. Uh, so they said, what we're going to say? Kol ha surike nasurim vis surike baitus mutarin. We're going to have baitus is mold. It's going to be permissible. Then we said, light plug. We wanted it to be, uh, you know. Um, the, the rule should be equal for everyone. Anyway, there's other sources that, where baitus is. Brought in, but Baitus Ben Zainan he had Shmaina Neviim Mid Bakim Kachad Al Pi Rabbi Lasa Ben Azai he had eight he had eight prophets um, all sewn together. Who were the eight prophets? Who would that be? Is that Yeshua Shaftim Shmuel Malachim Yeshaya Yermia. Eskel and Treyasa, maybe maybe Treyasa was counted. Maybe maybe the eight books of the prophets. That's all of the all the books of the prophets. What does it say? Who who are the eight prophets? Um, Rashi says Kol Sefer Nevi'im. 
Yoshua, Shoftim, Shoftim, Shmuel, Malachim, Yeshayahu, Yirmiyahu, Yecheskel, and Treyasa. Treyasa. Treyasa is counted as one. The 12 prophets are all counted as one. So that ha he had all the Sifri Nivim put together. It's all in one volume. Yeah, yeah, we've we've uh, adjusted it because of the printer. <clears throat> yeah, what we're going to learn today is not exactly um, um, the way we have everything today and tomorrow, because the uh, the publisher, the uh, the first printing of the um, of the Tanakh, probably like Bamberg or something like that, was. Yeah. Uh, Hired these Christian scholars to 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 put in chapters and and uh, chapter to, to divide it into chapters. So they divided Shmuel into two books, and they divided into they divided um, Kings into two books, Malachim into two books. So um, and then they put chapters in. So we never had chapters before. We had uh, separations because there's a Parsha has a a, a pay or a sama who would be divided up paragraphs and they made it into um they made it into chapters anyway we use it because that's uh convenient that's the way it's supposed to print it and some say what's this dollar over here instead of yeshem bach which is it the sages say that no he didn't have all all uh, eight books of the prophets together he had each book of the prophets separate Amar Rebbe, on the bottom I have Amar Rebbe Yehuda. Ma'isa ve'evi olafanei no turn of him k'suvim with the bachu kachar v'chshanim. It was a story. They brought turn of him k'suvim together, and they said that it was kosher. It's funny if that's Rebbe Yehuda. It must mean it can't mean Rebbe Yehuda, Rebbe Yehuda, Rebbe Lai, because he held that they're supposed to be separated. It must mean Rebbe Yehuda means Rebbe means Rebbe Yehuda Anasi. I have Rebbe as well, but then I have on the bottom that the Rashash switch it. Tell me again. Yeah, it's a part of Rameyer's group. That I have. I just want to see why the Rashash switches it. The Amar of Yehuda, Maisa. Okay, the Amar of Yehuda, Maisa. I don't know why he switches it. Must be Rabbi Yehuda and Nasi. Okay. Um. Yeah. I learned yesterday that a lot of the smaller scrolls they put them together because they have some right. All right, that's gonna come up page. Very good. So between Chumash to Chumash shall tire Abashit and between every Every book of the Chumash, which means between Brashis and Shemais, between Shemais and Vayikra and Vayikra and, Dvar, and Bamidbar and Bamidbar and Dvarim, um, there should be four empty lines. And so, so too should be between each book of the Prophets. And between the books of the Prophets of, of, uh, of the 12 Prophets, it's those minor Prophets, they're called so there should be three lines, three empty lines that divide it. Now, even though we just said that you should really have three or four lines in between each book, but if you finish the book at the bottom of a column, so you don't have to leave the top empty three lines. You can start right away on the top. Lines or columns? Three lines. Sheet in this line. Yeah. 
If someone wants to, to connect the Torah to the prophets, to the to the um to the writings, you can put it together. Now, at the beginning of the scroll, you can't start right away. Just a scroll, let's say. You don't start writing right at the very, very beginning because you have to encircle the post that's there. There's a little yeah. post. So you leave a blank, the amount that would encircle the post, and then you start writing so that the next part that get the, where the writing is on will encircle the parchment, not the, not the so wooden that's post. That's the beginning. That's sort of a yeah. voracious. Voracious. So, today, to surround the post. The sci-fi, what about at the end? How much should you leave at the end of here, we're not dealing with Vizay Sabracha, we're dealing with the end of Dibri uh, Hayamim, I guess. Um, or maybe it's the same. Kadei Lagavel Hekif, the amount of size, the amount that you need to surround the whole circumference of all the parchment that it's together. They need a much bigger, so that last piece would be like a uh, like a covering. You're allowed to finish on the bottom and start right away on the top, the next book. You don't have to leave uh, empty spaces like that. We're on top of the few dalad. <clears throat> and if you're going to cut it, because you, we said over here that you had all the books together, then you're allowed to cut it. My karma, what do you mean that you're allowed to cut it? Of course you're allowed to cut it. We said that it should not be put together. We had a heter that you're allowed to put it together. What do you mean you're allowed to cut it? Why do you have this the the scroll at this end at the bottom of a column and start the next one on the top? Because if you want to cut it, you'll still be able to cut it. And you'll be able to have you'll start right away on the top and not um like starting in the middle somewhere. So you end on the bottom and start on the top. That way if you have to slice it in the middle, it's gonna be uh it's gonna look look okay. Depends how big the space is between. Right? Because the end has to be wider. The circumference of everything that's come together is much bigger than just the five books. No, we're not talking about. The, oh, you're talking about the end. The and end. Then, uh -huh. At the end of the, of the Torah, yeah, the five books. The circumference there is going to be much smaller. Than yeah. The... Yeah. Maybe let's take a look at the next piece. Maybe this will answer. What, what's it referring to cutting what? Um, We're talking about cutting lengthwise? Divide, dividing the Torah. But dividing uh, Torah between... Dividing the Torah from the Nevi'im and the Tzuvim. Is it talking about separating one daf from another that's already been sewn together? Or actually cutting through the parchment? Um, Do you know? Yeah, I don't think it matters. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Every space in between the columns, they'll get wider as, as the scroll is written. Because every circumference is going to be wider. Yeah. So Hill is asking that if the end of the Torah needs to have the, the, the um, empty parchment. To, to surround the whole circumference of the of the whole scroll, so then each then you're going to need to have it wider at the end. The spaces between the Torah should be wider to be able to do that that circle. I think we're going to come to that discussion. Yeah. Uh, the length and the circumference have to be equal. It's going to come up now. And the yeah, we're going to we're get another yeah. opinion. Yeah. Is the definition of a minor versus major profit? Um, you want something to be the, the length of the Well, as they were later. They were later than minor profits. Or most of them were later. Yeah. I'm not sure why they were called minor. Maybe because they're smaller. Yeah, the twelve. We're talking about the twelfth, huh? Yeah. 
they say, you know, what's the difference between a, a minor surgery and a major surgery is? What's that? Minor surgery is when it's on someone else. <laughs> okay. Um, for a mini, <coughs> we have a contradiction. It says, <laughs> the, um, the beginning of the book and the end of the book, the end of the scroll, should be a little bit of parchment there to be able to surround. What does she need to surround? If it needs to just to surround the post, then Kashehekev. Our Bryce has said that you don't need to surround the post at the end, you need to surround the entire circumference. If you need to surround the entire, entire circumference, Kasha Ahmed, why do we say at the beginning that you need to have the, um, just to surround the pole, that's much smaller than that. Rav Nachman Yitzchik says, yeah, it depends. The beginning was to surround the post and the end was to surround the, uh, the entire circumference. It sounds like the, the Torah had, only had one pole. That's what it sounds like. If you would, and you, when you have one pole, then the last one surrounds the whole thing. That's what it sounds like. Right? Like the Megillah. You don't roll it like two. Ravashi, <clears throat> um, Ravashi says, That's talking about a Sefer Torah. Okay, now, what we're coming to is that a Sefer Torah has two poles. The Sefer Torah has two poles, so each one only needs to surround the post, the wooden post, doesn't need to surround the, the whole uh, circumference of the whole thing because you have two poles. Right? Kedetanya, as it was taught in Abraisa, all the, the books, all the scrolls are rolled from the beginning to the end. The Sefer Torah is, is rolled to the, to the center. And you have a post on each, on each side. As the other scrolls were just rolled up just around one. Then you would open it up like the way the Megillahs look. You know, pull it out on one side. And um, the Sefer Torah now had two posts and it was rolled in the center. Oh, uh, uh, do we know if the Sefer Torah that was just that was a that was a different discussion. That's a machlekes. The mezuzah is put on a slant, or the mezuzah is straight up. So yeah, so it's machlekes Rashi and Taisa second. Um, but we we say that it's on a slant. Therefore, when we read the Sefer Torah, we put it on a slant as well. The them put the mezuzah straight up, and so they when they have a Sefer Torah, they put it straight up. That's why they have a, a straight table. And that that because that holds it straight up. That's the, but that you know, people want to go so far as Chicago um the case was cannot be. So saying the case doesn't matter. The case is just a way to hold it straight up. That came not at the beginning it was how we have it, which it holds. Yes, yeah, how do you know? Uh, how are they going to wrap the Torah around him with that case? Oh, whatever case they put him, how are you going to wrap it around them with the uh, with, with the, the velvet no, with the velvet no, no, mantle? Oh, with the two poles, so we have it. You could, someone could do. It. No, no, the case the case is is not significant. The case is just a way to get it to stand up. Let's they put it on the sink to stand up. That's not significant. Yeah. So um, they take it out of the case. Uh, what is the problem? They take it out of the case. They look in the case it just holds it. It's just like a box. They, they keep it in. They they, they keep, keep it, it in, in because it's that's yeah. what we use to stand. But that doesn't mean that's uh, you know. okay. Anyway, um, we're holding now the Sefer and you have a post on each side. We're talking about the Sefer Torah. We're on fourteen a. This is the way the scribes in Yerushalayim would make their Sifri Torah. They would have two posts, two poles on each, uh, one on each end. Not, not Polish people. Not, not Polish people, Yitzhi says. Not poles. 
Brooklyn, but um, what is that? Okay. This is going to take us into a big discussion over here. It's going to take us till the next page. The Sefer Torah, the, the, the length of it, now we're not talking about the length, um, talking about from the top to the bottom, should not be bigger than, Yisraelakefei should not be bigger than the it's circumference. It's bigger than Again, but should not be right. You should not have it greater than the circumference, it should not be larger than the circumference. So, let's say the circumference means you take a string and wrap it around. So let's say that string is um, six, tvachim, let's say, then the height could be six. Tvachim. Right, and also lay a like You don't make the circumference. You don't make it fatter than the height. So depending on the thickness of your parchment, because right. that's how much it's going to take to roll up. That's how tall the sefer could be. The parchment is very thick. It's going to be very wide, and the, it could also have the. It could also be taller. Does this refer to when there are wooden poles, or without measuring the circumference? I think it's without, but I, I don't have that. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that. Yeah. Because the poles are, you, you can add the poles in later. That's not, here we're talking about the writing of it. So, Shalom um, Rebbe. They asked Rebbe, Shir Sefer Torah Bekama, how big is the Sefer Torah? Amalahan, he told them, Begvil Shisha. If you make it out of Gvil, uh, Gvil is the thicker parchment. So then the height could be six tvachim. The klaf bekama. Let's see, make it out of klaf. That's the thinner parchment. Parchment apparently was divided into um, into two. One side was called klaf. One side was called uh, duchsistus or something. Um, if you had them both together, I think it's called gvil. If you didn't divide it up. See what happened is that the hide, the, the skin could peel it in half. Could peel it in half. And then I think um I think it says that you're supposed to write on the I don't remember. It says you write on the outside of both of them. It means the part that's closer to the flesh over here, and you write on the part that's closer closer to the, to the skin side, the, the hair side over here, or if they wrote both in the middle. I don't remember which one it says. Motion's ruined. And um, yeah, Ramesha, help us out. And then um, the gvil, I think, is when it's both together. I think anyway. So gvil is going to be thicker. So that's going to be six tvachim. He says any day. I don't know. Rav Huna kasev shivin sifri deraisa v'le yisrael mele alechad. Rav Huna wrote seventy sifri Torah, and he never got even one. He only got one of them that worked out that the circumference was the same as the height. Yeah, it takes a lot of planning to get it uh, perfect, that it should be it should be the same. Ravacha bar Yaakov, Kosov Chad, Amashchei de Igli v'esramili. Ravacha bar Yaakov, he wrote one Sefer Torah on the skin of an eagle of a calf, and it worked out. The sages put their eyes on him, that means they were jealous of him, and he passed away. Yeah. No, you don't want to be too successful. Amrle Rabbana on the Rav Hamnuna, the sages said to Rav Hamnuna, "Kasav Rabami Dalid Mea Sifri Torah." That Rabami wrote a hundred, four hundred Sifri Torah. Amalehu, he says, ah, "I don't believe that." Dilma Torah Kat Sivalana Moshe, Torah Sivalana Moshe Kasav. Maybe he wrote one verse, four hundred times. You can't write in one lifetime four hundred Sifri Torah. That's way too long, way too much uh, work. Okay. So, isn't kinat sofrim a good thing? How can somebody die from kinat sofrim? Yeah. Yeah, but the evil eye comes from jealousy, and jealousy, but amongst the amongst the sages, is supposed to be a good thing. 
Here it says that people uh, were wondering how he merited with such accomplishment and that it caused the place to take six years. Maybe, maybe the answer is like this. Kina Seifrim has to do with effort. You see people working hard and um, and they say, oh my gosh, he's, he's staying up all night, so I'm going to stay up later. And this, but this was just like a stroke of luck that he managed to get it exactly at the the first sefer that he wrote worked out perfectly. It wasn't like trial and error, trial and error, trial trial and error would have been kind of safe from you know. Mm -hmm. wow. Here, how do you get so lucky, such mazel that the first time he does it, it works out? But that was uh, that creates a jealousy. You know? <clears throat> so people used to complain when they would say stories about geniuses. So what are you telling me? You know, the, if you tell me about someone that worked hard, he put in effort, so I can try to park hard. But uh, you tell me stories about geniuses that he knew the whole shafts when he was six years old. So what do you want from me? Well, like, uh, you know, what what do I do now? What's <laughs> you know. this is a conversation with Smith? Here. Okay. Now, how did what Phil is telling me that there's an opinion that says that he had he didn't actually write it himself. He had scribes write it for him. So why was why was Rav Amnuna surprised if he had scribes? What's the big deal if he had he had a factory of four hundred scribes? No, um, no, no, no. In in Rav Hamnuna's in Rav Hamnuna's saying that nah, he never wrote four hundred sefer Maybe he wrote the verse four hundred times. The one interpretation is that he didn't just write the verse alone, just like on one paper. I will not, you know, talk in class. I will not talk in class. Right? Uh, he, he he wrote. He had uh, he had. Um, 400 scribes write the Sifri Torah. They stopped at that point. He stepped in and he wrote Torah Tzivalana Moshe, Torah Tzivalana Moshe, in each one of them. That's in Rav Hamnuna that says that he never, that he couldn't have written for us. Okay, or maybe he just wrote it, uh, you know, like that. It's in the h and MS video. I will not steal luxury cars. I will not steal luxury cars. I won't. <laughs> okay. Amalei uh, Rav Ale Rav the Rebbe says to Rebbe Zayra, not the Rebbe Yanai Arba Meya Karmi. The Rebbe said to Rebbe Zayra that Rebbe Yanai, Yanai, I think, was a teacher of, uh, of Rebbe Yechonan. He planted 400 vineyards. Johnny Appleseed, right? Amalei, Dilma Shtayim, Kenegev Shtayim, Vachas Yetzizanov. Maybe it was only two, uh, two, two, this, what's the minimal vineyard? Is two um, vineyards, one here, two here, two here, and one that's coming out like a tail. Maybe he planted such vineyards, like the basic uh, vineyard, and that he did four hundred times. It's only um, what would that be? Two thousand trees. Okay. Amale Dilma Stang. Okay. Maysve, the Gemara has a question now. Aaron Shas and Maisha, we're going, we're getting into the uh, how big was the Torah, um, was the scroll. It's a very long question, but the all, the what what we're looking for here is what was the height and circumference of the Torah scroll that Maisha that Maisha made. Okay, so we start like this. Aaron Shas and Maisha, I'm a sign of chetzi arkei, v'am of chetzi rachbe, v'am of chetzi kemasi. Now. <clears throat> Moshe made the ark, right? It was made out of gold, wood, and gold. It's like three boxes. And the the um, the height the height of the ark was an arm and a half. 
length of the ark was two and a half amas. And the width of the ark was two and a, was was one and a half amas. So one and a half, one and a half by two and a half. Now, how big is an amma? So it's a machlekes Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda. Madison Sukkot. Reb Meir says that an amma is six tvachim. Reb Yehuda says an amma is five tvachim. <coughs> now, um, it's really just a machlekes about the kalim, the kalim, the utensils in the base of Migdash, in the Mishkan. When when we said that there was an amma there. Is that the regular ama that's used for building, or is that an ama? Is that a different sort of ama, like a, liquid, a fluid ounce or a other ounce? Right? A... Anyway, so maybe the ama for the kalim was different. Anyway, we're saying over here that the ama was the same, and the ama ba'ama ba'sheshes tvachan. Ama was six tvachan, which means that the length of the aron would be two and a half. That would be fifteen tvachan, right? Two would be 12, plus another half would be 15. The height would be one and a half, be nine tvach. Okay. Ba'aluchas arkan shisha v'rachman shisha. The luchas were six, six by six, they were square. Okay. Now, that's uh, the two of them. Yeah, I didn't want to confuse the one for Yehuda. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, 15 by 9, 22 of May. Yehuda's coming up. So, Vahalucha is Arkan Shisha Rachman Shisha, Vavan Shlesha. And they're thick, uh, three Tvachim. So, Munachas Kenegad Arkan Shal Aran. They're placed along the length of the Aran. So, Kama Luchas Eichles Barn. How much do the Luchas consume of the Aran? Shnei Masa Tvachim, 12 Tvachim. The six. Plus six. Each one of the tablets was six tvachim. Six tvachim square. So the two squares would be 12 tvachim by six. So in the length, I have 12. It's supposed to be 15. So I have left over three tvachim. So take out one tefach. Half a tefach was the thickness of the wall on one side, and half a tefach was the thickness of the wall on the other side. Because we're measuring from the outside, not from the inside. So nishtayir sham shnei tvachim. I have two tvachim left over. Shebehem sefer tayra munach that the sefer tayra would fit into the two tvachim. But the gemara later is going to, uh, as we turn the page, it's going to discuss that if you have um, the uh, six tvachim tall, is the sefer tayra. That means the circumference is six tvachim. That means that the diameter is two tvachim. Mm. Get the circumference from the diameter. But my question right. is, is that the, the Mar's going to discuss how it fit in over there. How it, we'll see it when the, we'll detail it. I don't remember the Torah getting into the dimensions. No, the Torah. According to this opinion, was on the side right there. So that I know that that's 15 Fachim. Mm -hmm. So I have 12 plus 2 for the title. But they were able to get the dimensions six, six by six. The Luchas were six by six, yeah. Is that, uh, that it says, uh, that it says, the Halucha is Arkan Shisha, Rachman Shisha. Is that a, a verse? Oh, uh, is that a Shabbat verse or is that, or is that a Gemara? Sorry, no. That 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 uh, that's that's in Malachim. Yeah, where do we um, know that it was six? Oh, that the luchas okay. were six tvachim. I'm not sure if that's a price or somewhere. That says clearly in Shmuel. I don't know. That's the size of the ark. Oh. Well, luchas are kinshisha. The Brisa says that they were six. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if they, uh, I'm Not sure if we have a, a textual source for that. Okay. Um the star sham slash tvachim we said snake tvachim shaba munach snemar in bar in rak snake luch savana mashiniach sham maisha. My ain bar in rak. It says in, in the book of Kings when um uh Shlam built the base of Migdash, it says that he put the Aran into the in, into the uh the veer into that section in the back. It says to the Kaidash Kadashim, it says in it was not in the ark except two 
luches of stone, when it says there was not, except that double negative that says that there was not means that it's excluding, means nothing else. Except means excluding again. So when they have an exclusion and another exclusion, El Alarabis, it's coming to include. Yeah. But why is an inclusion, exclusion plus another exclusion include? Either it's because it's a double negative or, or maybe the way you understand the double negative is that it's an exclusion of the exclusion. That the exclusion is not 100%. I thought there were other things in the art. The man, the broken tablets. Broken tablets it says here that we, that's coming up. Um, you see, we didn't use up all six, uh, all nine. Um, all nine uh, going up. I remember when I saw we uh, we only used um, we only used three of it going up, right? Only three talking because the height of the luchas was three, so you can still fit the broken luchas um, into the ark. And they would take up the, the uh, corresponding space to the to the other luchas. That would be six. And then you'd have to figure out like what's with the other three. Yeah, I'm not sure about, the, about the man where that was. Paraduma ashes also. And the paraduma ashes. Well, the rabbi sefer When it says ein miet achemit, it says there was no. There was no, there was nothing in the ark except for the tablets. That means that there was something else in there. And what was that other thing? That was the Sefer Torah, Shimon Achbara. Pinasta in the ark. You've satisfied the length of the ark. Say your parnasta are in the Go satisfy the width of the ark. Now we said that it was nine, and you only used up uh, six, so you have three left over. The luchas consume of the ark. She should talk him. Six talk him. There's some slices talking. You have three left over. Same yam tefach. So take out one tefach. That's of the cases of the cases of which we said half a tefach is the width of the wall. Remember, we're measuring from the outside. Other half of the tefach is the width of the back, is the, the other wall. You have two tefachim left over. The reason for this is, is because when I'm going to want to take the sefer tayra out, I'm going to need to be able to get my hands under. So I have to leave a little bit on the side to be able to pull it out. So I have a tefach on each end to be able to get my hand in to lift it up. Okay. <clears throat> That's what Rameyer's opinion is. Rabbi Yudai, okay, now we're going to switch. Rabbi Yudai says that that measurement that you had, 15 by 9, is not accurate. You, where do you get 15 tefachim by 9 tefachim? That's because you said that they, uh, that a an ama is six tvachim. But if an ama is really only five tvachim, so then two and a half amas is not going to be 15. Two and a half amas is going to be um, uh, 12 and a half. Five, five, and two and a half. 12 and a half. What's going to be one and a half ama? It's going to be seven and a half. Five plus a half plus a half ama is going to be half of five. It's going to be seven and a half. The Amma is really only five. But the Luchas are still six. The Avian Shleishan is still wide three. They're going along the length of the barn. How much do they eat, consume of the ark? There's only a half a tefach left. There's 12 and a half. When you use 12, you only have a half left. So, etzbele keselzev, etzbele keselzev. In a tefach is four fingers. Uh, so, a half a tefach is two fingers. So, that means the thickness of the wall on one side, the thickness of the wall on the other side is each one finger thick. Pinasta are in the okay. So, that's as far as the, that's, you've, uh, you've satisfied the aran according to its length. Say, a panas arke What about to its width? How much do the luchas consume of the ark? Six tefach. Now I have a tefach and a half left over because it's seven and a half. So six in a, in a space of seven and a half it will be one and a half left over. Take out a half a tefach. 
אצבע, הוא מחץ, אחץ, אצבע, according to him, according to him, this half a tefach, what's this phase? אצבע לקייס על זה ואצבע לקייס על זה. It's, it's, they dropped the word of mechza. So, Etzbel okay, so half a tefach would be one finger for each wall. According to, that's what, that's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, that the walls only get, are only one finger thick. According to uh, Rabbi Meir, the walls were two and two fingers thick. Because um, half a tefach. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it's um, it's one etzba, quarter of a dam. The shtayir sham tefach, but I still have a tefach left over. Shabai amudim aimdim. These is this is where the pillars were. Now, what uh, what are these pillars? I don't think anyone really knows, but they're apparently they're these silver pillars that were put in there. Shenemar, as it says, a pirion asalei melech shleimer. Shleimer melech made a pirion is like a canopy. May atzi alavanin from from. Uh, Lebanon wood, Amudov, its pillars, Asa Kesef, he made it out of silver, Rifidasa Yizav, not sure what that is, Mekavte Agaman, the seat was made out of um, uh, purple wool, something was made out of silver. What is the Rifidasa? It was made out of silver. Uh, gold, I mean, it was made out of gold. His back was made out of gold. Okay, so we have these pillars that apparently were made by Shlema Melech. And they were put in the yard. And that's what takes up the last tefach, according to Rabbi Yehuda. We're going to ask later, where were these pillars, according to, according to Rabbi Meir? And, um, okay. But Argis Yeshigur by Plishtim Darin Lelikei Yisrael Munach Betzidai. If you remember, one time when they went to battle, they decided they were going to take the ark with them. They said, we'll for sure win. The ark is so special. How, how could an Aaron? By Plishtim going to Kodesh Kodashim. Ezra says you're not allowed to take uh, any money from Goyim to build a base of Migdash. How does a Orin with uh, mice and Achbarim Shulzahov and Tcherim go into a base of Kodesh Kodashim? Yeah. Daniel, do you have an answer to that? That's a good question. I think uh, in Chassidus uh, uh, Chaim, doesn't it talk about the Yam Shel Shleima? Yes. That the that has cows under it. Yep. Oh, so you're not you're not asking about the shape. You're asking about that it's a gift from uh, that it's a gift from uh, uh, from a you know. from a goy. How how's the how does a gift from a goy go into Kodesh Kadoshim by the Aron? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there was a way the Zara. They they had the fire in the Zara, the Zara, and the Achbarim, and the, and the mice that was there. They worship mice. Oh, I don't know if it's because they worship mice. I thought that was because that was their punishment. They when they kept it, the mice were eating the uh, the hemorrhoids, and were were biting them. And um, to, as an atonement for that, they sent it back. I thought there was an atonement for but, taking the ark. But, but seriously, to put that into the Kodesh Kodashim? Mm. No, it's in, the, it's in the Kodesh Kodashim. It's not in the ark. It's in the Kodesh Kodashim. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but Chaim's asking, how could you put something, this gift from the non-Jews into the holiest place in the world. Should put it somewhere else, put it in the uh, some other place. But but the actual golden mice, all those things were put in also or just the the ark? Just the box just the box? Yeah. It says Argus. Who put it in the Jews? Sound, I'm not sure. I don't know. Huh? Who put it in the Jews or just the Philistines? No, the Philistines captured the ark. Then they started to get these punishments, um, very uh, uncomfortable punishments. These uh, mice were biting their hemorrhoids. And so they sure. decided to send it back. They moved it from this town to this town to this town. Every town they moved it to, there was problems. And, and so they, uh, they said, okay, that's it. We're getting rid of it. We're sending it back. So they put it on these uh, oxen on a wagon, a new wagon or something. They put it on oxen and it went 
uh, walked straight back to to the to where we're supposed to go. And they gave her this gift together with it was this it's golden that money, golden money. That money with Jewish money. So it says over here that it was put in the in the uh, Kedusha Kedushim. So Cows were singing Sharot. I could, I could yeah. be straight by, yes, by Yashru Haparim or something. By yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> by love and on that box, I'm sorry. The gold came from the going. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man, nailed it. Okay. Do the rest of the octave. The yeah, uh, Chaim, uh, David oh, over here is saying that this is the turning over of the money of the Goyim that's coming to, it's the, um, the, no, the it, there's a halacha that a Goy can't be involved in based on English. Ezra told him, Loi lochem velano. Aha, uh -huh. velano, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, love safety of Shinema Lakaya Sefateza. I want to finish the question and the answer before we stop. Uh Lakaya, as it says, Lakaya, the the Sefer Tara Zeva Santa Mesimitsar and Brisa Shem. It says you put the, the safe tar on the side. It doesn't say you put it in the ark in the in the ark, it says you put it on the side. Mitsadamura Falebitaicha. This is a Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Amani Makaya main bar and rock. What did you mean we said that the double negative, the double exclusion? Because that's the rabbi is Shivri Lucha Shimanachamar. That's coming to tell me. That the Shivri Aluchis, the broken tablets were in the ark. If you want to say that the Sefer Torah, now we're going back to the question. Yeah, there were two tablets, broken ones. And if you want to say that the Sefer Torah is six Tvachim in its, in its uh, circumference, the Kol Sheish Be Kefa Yish Leishat Tvachim Yish Be Rechav Tefa. Anything that's three, that's three in circumference is one in diameter, pi. Some, you know, averaged out. So, um, now that would be if you would roll it up in one scroll, it would be like that. But we did it in two scrolls, so that's going to be that the circumference now. I don't know if you call it a circumference, you call it a, the perimeter, uh, right? Uh, it's going to be more than two. Uh, it's going to be more because now you have two scrolls and you have the parchment that goes in the middle, you have two scrolls, it's going to be bigger. How does it fit into uh, two tvachim? When you, uh, if it was two tvachim just ro rolled up as one, now you made it into two. How's it going to fit there? No, that sefer was rolled to the beginning, just one pole. Nevertheless, you can't fit something that's two tvachim into an area that's only two tvachim. You need to have a little bit to get it in and get it out. You can't, uh, you can't put it in there. It's too tight. I'm Ravashi, the Karch Bay Port of a Karchel. Ravashi says that they spread it out over the, uh, the, the little bit and they unrolled it and they spread it over the top. So it was made it a little bit smaller. So that, okay. Rav Yehuda. Um, I think I should stop over here. Let's leave it over here. Because or else we're going to rush it. And uh, okay, Mitzvah Shem tonight we can uh, we can learn.